I am Rebecca Drake, um, and this year I am the poet in residence at the Maritime Museum in Hull. Uh, so over the past year, I've been writing poetry in response to the museum's collections and to the history of the area. I'm going to read two poems, and the first one is called Ni Names for the Sea in 1453. This is a found poem based on the customs accounts of the port of Hull in the 15th century, edited by a scholar called Wendy Childs. Uh, I wanted to evoke the sense of busyness of the port of Hull in the Middle Ages. And so the poem uh, uses language, um, the poem uses words found in Middle English and Latin. Stockfish, stockfish. Stockfish, panis curtis sine grano, hans panis indiganarum sine grano, stockfish plus intergo, stockfish, stockfish, stockfish. Stockfish, 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 stockfish. Salmon is salis, alec is albi, salt hid is piscibus, salsis, ole. Mantilus, salmonis, salis, ole, stockfish, salmonis, litmus, alicus, albi, ole, ale, mudfish, sacis, hoppy, alicus, albi, alicus, albi, vacue, piscibus, salsis, mudfish, codfish, imbarellis, mudfish, bitumin, is codfish, stockfish, osmundus, angularum, cinerum, picus, wale, ole. Madara, ferry, lini, oli, wada, titling, dryfish, stockfish, vitri, remis, gringinga, lini, ali, stockfish, wool, stockfish, 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 stockfish. The second poem I'm going to read is called Goldborough by the Sea, and it's another poem um, that is based or written in response to the, the area uh, around the Humber estuary. Uh, so whereas the last poem was, was based on Hull, this poem is based on Grimsby. And there's a popular Middle English romance that takes place in Grimsby, Havelock the Dane. And the story in the romance is Havelock, who is the rightful heir of the Danish to the Danish crown, um, is usurped and he is brought to England where uh, he fishes at Grimsby for a living uh, and he marries the English princess Goldborough um, and she goes to live with him by the sea in a fishing hut. So this is Goldborough by the sea. She had prayed for the bower doors to fall open, hadn't she? She had longed to leap down past the causeway and into the sea, adrift. This is not the life she had in mind, bound to a withered willow of a boy, locked, mired to his knees in mud, blood and fish guts. He has brought her treasures, hasn't he? Unseeing pearls and oyster shells, a bed frame of driftwood, a mattress of seaweed, Salt fish that sparkle in chests like diamonds, a seal strung harp, a whalebone comb to rake the ocean tresses of her hair, and strings of sapphire scales interlaced like marsh channels strung at the edges of sandpiper wings. He has learned to wrestle the fen, to breathe like an eel, lungs weighing mud to bring her feasts fit for a king. She sees him hooked by the gills to the table, writhing in colic slime, long limbs racked in spasms. The burning tide turns hungry towards the land. Death rattles, red flecked the ridges. Goldborough waits at the foreshore, waits for a boat, a sail, a wing, a dream of winging over the sea.